Did you hear about the boat that was sent to collect the dead bodies? Uh, I think that was the R M. Oh shit, R M S Carpathia, right? It was a cruise liner, just like the Titanic. No, that was the ship that picked up the survivors. Ooh. The ship that collected the dead bodies was the C S McKay Bonnet. The McKay Bonnet showed up on April seventeenth, two days after the accident. Wow, two days. <laughs> it set out from Halifax, a port in Canada, and recovered 306 bodies. Damn. The Atlantic that far north was really cold. It would have to be for there to be ice bugs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the bodies they pulled out of the water were frozen solid. This isn't a very nice story. Damn, yeah, shut your mouth. <laughs> so, what happened next? Well, they say the McCabe and they recovered something more than just dead bodies. Excellent. There were various bits of stuff floating around the water. Things that drowned, had carried with them, the stuff dislodged as the ship sank. One of these things they found was a coffin. A coffin? Yeah. A wooden one. Oh, this is me talking. Okay. Yeah. The craftsman who made it must have been pretty skilled. It wasn't just a wooden coffin, it was all wood. There were no nails, or reinforcements, and there were no gaps in the wood anywhere. It was airtight. Holy shit. The crew got pretty curious about what might be inside it, and opened it up. They had to get a wedge and a hammer to open. It was so well made. Inside? What? They found a woman. Or I guess you would say they found the dead body of a woman. Her hair was thick and black, her skin was deep brown and didn't show any signs of age or decomposition. They say she looked gorgeous, like a goddess. Hmm. She was obviously dead, but everyone who looked at her said she just looked like she was sleeping or something. Her skin was so lifelike, she looked like she might wake up any minute. She didn't, though. Like the rest of the bodies they found, she was frozen south. Eventually, the McKay Bonnet finished the search and returned to Halifax. 306 bodies were unloaded and taken ashore. However, it was warm enough that they began to melt. They say that the stink was horrible. Oh, man. But there was one body that didn't fill. That girl in the coffin. That's right. Everybody thought... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is that you? Yeah, I think, I think so. Alright, everybody thought for sure that she'd melt and start to rot like the rest of them eventually. But weeks passed and nothing happened. Then a month had passed, and another, and it was summer, and she was still frozen south. What the fuck? After a while, people started to say she was some sort of miracle. Rumors about the girl started to spread from people came to visit Halifax from all over. After a while, people started to call her All Ice. Alice. Oh, that's very clever. Uh huh. <laughs> of course, those rumors didn't last long. Why? Well, she up and disappeared. What? One day Alice was there, the next day she wasn't. They say someone snuck into where they were keeping her and stole her back. With the body gone, the rumors followed pretty quickly. And after a while, nobody remembered her. You might be able to find something about her if you could find a newspaper from back then, but that's about it. Wait, you just said she was on this boat. Yeah, I did. Alice has got to be somewhere on this ship. What the fuck? Now why the hell would you say something like that? Cause I know. And just what is it you know? What happened to Alice after she was stolen? What? Junpei Gold. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, tell me. What happened to Alice? Seven nodded slowly and took uh, took on the look of a man recalling something long buried. Well, around that time, the word was that there was a thriving black market in New York. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there still is, but this is but this was special. All millionaires from all over the world. I've heard that Alice went up for auction there. The person who won the auction was Lord Dashiell Gordain. 
Yep, the same man who bought the ship. Oh! This, this ship. You've heard the name before, right? Sir Gordain. Isn't it the guy who bought the Gigantic, the Titanic's sister ship? Yup, that's him. Although I guess he hasn't done that yet. What do you mean? Gordain bought Alice in 1912. Then, four years later, in 1916, he bought the Gigantic. And he hit Alice somewhere on the Gigantic. But nobody knows where. He died in 1931. And apparently he died without ever telling anyone where Alice was hit. However... However, what? Alright, don't interrupt me. <laughs> well, he did have one close friend who asked him. Where was Alice? Shit, I got whiplash. Fuck! <laughs> oh my god. My fucking and, neck! <laughs> Sorry, continue. And he said... Shit! Alice sleeps in the small chamber past the forest of knowledge beneath the navel of... The Gigantic. Very important. Remember that. What the hell is that? Some kind of riddle? He guesses as good as mine. Seven threw his hands up in the feet. So, that's it. Whatever you think, I believe it. She's oh. hidden somewhere on the Gigantic. In other words, she's hidden somewhere on this ship. Hmm. Before Jupe could dispute Seven's rather bizarre claim, Clover! <laughs> Clover! <laughs> what are you fucking two niggas doing? Get over here! <laughs> and... And then uh, this guy's like, with that cryptic. Oh, sorry, it might be useful someday. And let's hold on to that piece of knowledge. Hmm. How's that whiplash? It, it's fine. Oh, go ahead. Oh, that mummy wasn't just a normal mummy. Oh boy. They say that she was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it. Got put on the Titanic, and even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. Was the Egyptian prince, priestess Alice? Had the water of her body become Ice Nine? No, that's nuts. There's no way some somebody like that could even exist. Jupe shook his head, trying desperately to clear her and followed Seven to the operating room where Clover was waiting. Alright. Uh, we're gonna pause here and we're gonna pick this up a little bit later. See you on a little bit. See you soon. Now, okay, guys, and we're about to leave. All right, all right let's get out of here. Oh, hey, hold on. Jupe, stop. I'm about to pull the key into the doorknob. What's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Oh, where is she? Jupe, turn around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. God damn it! Where the hell she go? Ah, uh, okay, just hold on a minute, I'll go get her. Damn, I really hate seeing that. <laughs> Jupe left seven at the door and head back to the operating room. Clover! Very important, very important scene, guys. This is probably one of the most important scenes in this game. He found her standing next to the operating table. She was staring at the mannequin. Hey, Clover, what's wrong? Oh, right, I gotta do her voice. <laughs> Jeez. Come on, let's get out of here. She didn't respond. If she had been standing up on... Oh, if she hadn't been standing... Uh, okay, okay, okay. What are you doing? Did you did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? Uh huh. Clover didn't laugh. We we've already read this part, but we're waiting for Clover to say a little certain something. Um, yeah, I'll let you guys read that. My brother might be dead. Uh huh. That's why we can find him. If he's dead, I'm gonna be next. Huh? Suddenly the operating room felt very very cold. What? Did she have like some kind of intuition or like her, a past, a past self told her that she was gonna die from the uh, from the safe ending? That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know, man. But she's like, I'm gonna be next. W what are you talking about? W what's wrong with you? He gave her a small shake, but she still didn't respond. The silence grew heavier. Junpei, what do you want to do? No. Give her the four leaf clover you got from Santa. Oh yeah. It this is mandatory? Yes, this is mandatory. Thanks for reminding me. You have to give her that. If not, you get, you're gonna get axed. 
<laughs> yeah, you get you get your freaking whole face chopped off. <laughs> And then at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're going to shit your pants. <laughs> oh my god, he's still on that, man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> he didn't know why, but suddenly Jupiter remembered something he'd, give, he'd been given earlier. He reached to his pocket and dug it out. Hey, I got your name on this. <laughs> 40 <Lover>. Clover. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's actually her real name, believe it or not. It's really interesting. Santa had given it to him in the second class room. In the, oh, damn. He held it out to Clover. Did you know what each of the uh, four leaves represent? Hope, fate, love, and luck. Take it. Use it as a good luck charm. He pressed the four leaf Clover into her hand. But isn't there a bookmark? Listen to me, Clover. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all those, that'll bring you good luck. Snake, I mean, your brother, he's not dead. He's alive somewhere, I'm sure of it. You just gotta believe in that. Clover stared at the four-leaf clover in her hand. He could see tears starting to form at the corners of her eyes. Thank you. Her voice was tiny and broken, and, she, and as she spoke, she started to cry. She, uh, she tried to hide her tears by looking at the floor, but it did little good. She wiped away tears with the baggy arms of her jacket, but more quickly took their place. No matter how she tried, <clears throat> she couldn't stop crying. <clears throat> her tears made small wet circles on the floor. Thank you. I don't know how to do this voice. She said it again. Then she looked up at Jupe and seemed to choke down at the last. Oh, the last of her. Choke down the last of her grief! Come on. She did her best to smile. <laughs> Jupe wiped an uh, errant tear from her cheek with his thumb. With his thumb? And gave her the best smile he could manage. Now come on. Seven's waiting for us at the exit. But still, she didn't move. Wait, before we go, there's one thing I want to ask you. What's that? Can I crack you with an axe? Uh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think when you hear the word experiment? For a moment, his mind froze. Then he came back to his senses and realized that the word meant nothing to him, aside from the dictionary definition. Uh, what? Oh, uh... I guess it was just coincidence then. I mean that you knew about the four-leaf clover. What does she mean? 